okay guys so now the first step is to create a dynamic web project and we will set up our working environment okay so right now let's do a right click here in your project explorer go to new click on dynamic web project and now let's give a project name as home.com now let's click next next again and hit this checkbox uh, generate web.xml deployment descriptor will be needing it so check this box now hit finish and give it some time to generate the web project for me okay so right now we got a project here called home.com and obviously this project is going to be our first spring MVC project okay I'm really excited for it okay so the next thing is I'm going to web content folder here and inside the web content folder let's go to web INF folder and inside the lead directory uh, let me copy paste all the spring jars that I have downloaded from the internet so I'm expecting that you have already downloaded your spring uh, framework jars okay now let's do have a copy paste here uh, inside the lead folder so let me go to my download folder right now okay and in my download folder there is a uh, where is my jars okay here is my jars spring framework 5.1.5 release let me double click it let me go into the libs directory let me do command a or control a command c let me go back to my eclipse or sts whatever you are using and here in the leaf folder let me do a control b so it is going to paste all my spring jars here now you might think that okay why I'm including all the unnecessary jars as well because I don't want to waste time guys right now let's copy paste everything uh, let's understand the concept right now and obviously after that we'll be using Maven and we'll be very choosy whenever we'll be you know including our jars okay to our web project but for now let me copy paste everything okay so we'll not be wasting time by discussing about jars which one to pick which one to exclude rather copy paste everything and learn the concept first okay okay so that's it so the next step is to configure your tomcat with a workspace so we definitely you know we have a we are creating a web project you are creating a website we should be placing that website inside a server right so we need a web server so what kind of server we are going to use here obviously we'll be using tomcat here and i'm damn sure if you already worked with jsp servlet you must be knowing tomcat and also you must be knowing you know how to configure tomcat so i don't want to waste your time as well so i've already configured my tomcat server here tomcat version 9.0 so uh, make sure you know you have a server here configured with your workspace and Obviously, in my previous courses also, I have discussed, you know, how to con uh, how to configure a server with a workspace. Pretty simple. No need to waste time. And with this setup, we are ready for our first Spring MBC app development. Okay, so the things that we have done so far, we have created a dynamic web project, we have included all the spring jars, and we have uh, you know, configured a Tomcat server with our workspace. And that's it. With these three things, we are ready 
to develop our first spring MVC app. But guys, one more thing I want you guys to download as well. That is not really necessary, but I want you guys to do that. Please download the spring source code. Okay, so that, that is going to help us to see the internal classes, interfaces, annotations, how, how those classes have been implemented uh, by looking into the internal source code of you know, Spring Framework. And the way we are going to do that by you know, attaching the source code of Spring Framework with our project workspace. Okay, might be this is not making sense to you right now if you are working with a web project for the first time. But don't worry, I'll tell you everything about it. So the point is, sometime during our project development, we might need to see how Spring Framework is working internally, how the Spring MVC is working internally by looking into the source code written by the Spring developers. Okay, so whenever we download Spring Framework jars, a lot of lot of classes, lot of interfaces comes free with those jars, right? But how they have written those classes, right? Sometime we need to see them right and for that we need to download the spring source code and it that is that is pretty easy if we are using maven but we are not using maven right now in our project so let me go to my safari browser and let me manually download it by typing in something spring uh, framework uh, framework source code download download and let me see if I'm getting something here okay I'm getting a github link here let me click here and hopefully I can download every okay so this is the source code of spring bean spring AOP spring JDBC spring ORM everything is here and where is spring MBC okay spring web MBC okay no problem so right now we can download this zip file okay just download it keep it in your workspace i'll tell you how to use it okay so this is the thing that you are going to do for me okay so that's it so right now we are done with our project setup and let's start understanding the spring mbc module okay so let's start understanding different concepts related to spring mbc module let me tell you guys configuring a spring mbc application is really tough for a lot of people the reason for that because they keep a lot of basics. So here, maybe we are going to take some time. Maybe it's going to take a while for us to understand every single thing. But once you master it, you can develop or you can configure a Spring MVC application within two or three minutes. But for that three minutes, first we need to have a strong, uh, you know, basics. Okay, we need to build our fundamental. And that's what we're going to do right now. And first thing is first, we are going to learn about the front controller. So we'll be understanding what is a front controller. Okay, so the front controller is really necessary for our MVC application. And first of all, we are going to understand what is the job of the front controller with some animations. And once we are done seeing those animations, we can start coding. Okay, so first thing is I'm going to show you some simple animations, some simple fundamentals I'm going to give you. So uh, just have a look on these animations and I'll see you just after the presentation.